Hey there, and welcome to the third part of the Origins Redesigns. This will be part one of the Sidekicks series, so there's going to be two parts where we're going to split up the episodes between all the side characters. This redesign session will feature all of the side characters from Ivy, Heather, Thistle, Ebony, and Rose's episodes. So basically, the Origins episodes that have already come out. The very next video will be all about the sidekick characters from the upcoming episodes that have not been released yet. So unfortunately, these designs will not be implemented into the reboot, but the next episode's designs absolutely will. But I still think it would be fun to do the redesigns anyways, just to see how it may have looked if we had redone all the episodes. Starting off with Ivy's episode, we're going to be doing Ivy's mother, whose name is Hyacinth. Ivy's mom is definitely more of a rough and tough kind of mama. She doesn't mess around. Like, she's a little more strict than most parents in Origins. She's definitely got more of an attitude than most. So it definitely wanted that to shine through in her design. She has a lot more spikes, a lot more fluffs, and she's also a little bit on the older side. So I decided to implement a little bit of those fluffy hairs to kind of make her look a little bit older, a little more rough around the edges. And of course she is a house cat, so I decided to give her a little collar with a blue flower. Since hyacinths are usually blue and purples, I thought it would be really nice to have a cute little blue collar on her to symbolize her name, since it was never actually mentioned in the show. So give it up for new hyacinth! Of course, we have Ivy's little brother next, whose name is Thorn, and we're gonna keep these designs quite simple since Ivy's design is very simple. All I wanted to do to make Thorn stand out a little bit more is have one little hair, one little cowlick stick up on the top of his head, almost like that's his little Thorn. So I mainly made him look like his sister, but they're a little bit different. Ivy's obviously coloration is a little bit lighter while his is a little bit darker and he has that little cowlick. As different as they are personality-wise, I think it would be really interesting to have them look similar in design. And that is our baby boy Thorn. I know this has been a popular character for a lot of different reasons. Reed. I have so much to say about Reed. This character is very interesting because people tend to either take his side or don't, or fall somewhere in the middle of that gray area, which is exactly what I was going for with the character. I wanted to be very clear that abuse is in no way okay. But I also wanted to explain where it comes from. I wanted to make sure this character was irredeemable. I wanted to make sure that this character was deep and realistic. People don't just wake up one day and decide to hurt other people. So I decided to make his character a little round on some edges and then sharp on some edges because I really think that defines Reed as a person. Reed is honestly a very sensitive person, a very hurt person, and wants to be this smooth, gentle creature, but when he does get spiked up and he gets rage, he doesn't know how to control it and ends up hurting people, which draws them further away, which hurts him even more. It's sort of that double-edged sword, which is exactly why most of the points that I put on Reed have double edges, because when you hurt people, it hurts you too, whether you realize it or not. I also gave him a little bit more of the Burmese cat features, so he has a little bit more rounded ears and a little bit stubbier face, and he obviously has a lot more coloration. I think he looks like a Reese's peanut butter cup now, and that's adorable. And you know, I honestly used to compare Ivy and Reed as PB and J because Ivy is purple and Reed is peanut butter colored, but they obviously don't go together that well. <laughs> Still, I think this new design is wonderful, and it also adds some darkness around his face. And if you didn't know, he does become a reaper, so it will be very interesting to see where his character goes from here. Reed's mother has always been one of my favorite designs for absolutely no reason. The previous design was honestly extremely bland, but this redesign just has my heart in a chokehold in the most best way. She literally looks like a mama bear. And I love that because she is a mama bear. She is a gentle creature. She has fluffiness to her. She is soft. She is compassionate. And I really wanted that to shine through because Burmese cats have a little bit different color variations. So I went with a little bit of the darker version of the Burmese cat. I wanted her design to mimic reeds in a way but not so much that they're identical. I wanted to make sure that they're related because she looks very different from Reed. I wanted to implement sort of that double edge spikiness to her, but I wanted it to come off softer, fluffier. I didn't want it to come off edgy like Reed's. I wanted it to be a little more welcoming to show that 
Reed could have had all the potential to do that, but fell down the wrong path. Her name is Morning Glory. I don't know if I ever mentioned that in the series, but we call her Glory or Gloria, and that's because her eyes are this wonderful yellow, like Morning Glory flowers. You know, everything's named after flowers in this show. But that is our beautiful Morning Glory. Reed's dad. Oh boy, I'm sure everyone is gonna light the comments on fire about this man. Yeah, he's just one of those bad characters. I don't really have much to say about him. I just decided to make his design very angular, very spiky, giving him that double-edged spike just like Reed, except a lot more dangerous looking, giving off that vibe of aggression. He's got a lot more spikes on his tail, a lot more spikes on his body. He also has round edges, but the round edges are more square. He's definitely got that look that you don't want to mess with him. I even picked out a realistic angry Burmese cat for the reference. <laughs> Don't ask how long it took me to find that. Reed's dad is an even more tortured soul. People who carry on the line of abuse are honestly just as hurt themselves. And it's very sad, and those people could definitely get help. I always want to show that, hey, people can get help, that's a good thing. But abuse is bad, and abuse is abuse. There's nothing that's gonna cover it up, there's nothing that's going to make it better for anyone, really, the abuser or the victim. It's just something that happens when people don't get the help that they need, can't control themselves, and Reed's dad is an awful person because he continues to allow it to happen, he doesn't take any accountability for his actions, he doesn't work on himself, he just hurts people, and he did hurt people until he passed away. Making him, probably, dare I say, the worst character in this entire show. Reed's dad, I'm sorry, you're a sad, sad character, and, uh, and I killed you. <laughs> but you kind of deserved it, so, yeah. Azalea, cute little Shiba Inu baby! Oh my god! I still love her design and what her character stands for. She's sort of this gentle guide, which is amazing and exactly what Ivy needs in this moment. May was floundering in this episode. She had no idea what she was doing. She was thrown into a very, very drastic situation. And luckily, other characters pulled through for Ivy in May's steed, as May managed to learn what she needed to do with these vessels and just how hard it was going to be. So I think characters like Azalea are actually very important to the story because they showed May what she should be doing. So Azalea was actually a great leader and showed May, hey, this is how you take care of someone after they've been hurt, which is a fantastic lesson everyone should know how to do. Whenever somebody comes to you as a victim of abuse, it is so important to listen to their story. People are often victim blamed when they tell the truth and nobody wants to believe them. So the best thing you can do is listen and be compassionate and offer as much help as you can. So be a good leader and be a good guardian like Azalea. Our cute, pink, adorable Shiba Inu. Burdock is a fan favorite, I would say. Burdock has so much spunk and personality. If I imagine Burdock doing anything, it's just sort of a jazz hands, sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. And I love that about him. He's got this showy can attitude. But he's also a Norwegian forest cat, which means he's going to be extremely fluffy, like a Maine Coon. So, I decided to up the ant on, <laughs> on his design because, yeah, I love drawing fluffy cats. So we're gonna go all out with the fluff. We have fluff everywhere. And with all that fur, I figured Burdock doesn't seem like the most upkept character, so I decided to add in some leaves and some little tufts out of place. And I also decided to make him have a little makeshift sash to carry all of his medical supplies in, as he's a very adept healer. Burdock's such a sweet guy, because he honestly gives Ivy so much validation in one of the hardest points of her life. Offers her safety, support, and what she needs the most, healing. Whether that be physical, emotional, he unconditionally gives her all of that. Honestly, this whole episode of Ivy's is just a wonderful reminder of how strangers will always be there for you. There are people out there with kind hearts, and there are people out there that will save you in your time of need without ever asking for anything in return. You just gotta know where to look. 
<coughs> You're already here. <laughs> oh, Burdock, look at how fluffy you are. So beautiful. Look at all your mossy earth tones. Mwah, love this redesign. I heavily debated redesigning this character, but after finding some amazing reference images, I decided to stop debating and just start drawing. So we have the Lantern Bearer, one of the most influential gods in the lore of Morse. The Lantern Bearer takes many different forms. She changes her form to best match what you imagine her as in your head. So if you imagine a teddy bear to be the lantern bearer, that's what she will appear as. If you imagine her as a dinosaur, she'll appear as a dinosaur right before your very eyes. But because our story takes place from the perspective of dogs and cats, she's usually represented either by a tiger or a lion or a wolf, some ancient large form of what they are. So here she is actually a maned wolf. She's going to be a little more fluffier. She's got a lot more tufts to her. I used an image of a gray wolf as the reference, since maned wolves are usually a lot more brown, but I love the silvery look of the gray wolf. So we went with a lot more whites and silvers, and I also added in some adorable glowing stars. I mean, how much fun would that be? To have some twinkling stars in your fur. Oh my gosh, she would be so gorgeous in real life. Just ethereal wolf stepping out onto the lake, glittering fur and shining eyes and points the lantern to the sky. That moment with Heather would be so unreal. So needless to say, this redesign is fantastic and I love how it turned out. I loved giving a lantern bear a little more defining features. Another fan favorite, Fern. We love our little Fern. Not much change with her design, honestly. For once in my freaking life, the original design actually looks like the animal it's supposed to look like, a corgi. Good job past pet peeves, but good god girl, did everyone else look exactly the same. Help, <laughs> send help. The only thing I changed was making her design a little bit more stubby. I definitely wanted her to be a little more stubby and stout. And then of course I did add a little tiny hint of purple into her ear, where that's just about it. She just stayed this bubbly, adorable little corgi, and honestly, she is perfect the way she is. Moving on to Thistle's episode, we have Thistle's father, who is Thistle's adoptive father, and his name is Cantor, which is a type of lily. Fun fact, lilies are actually very dangerous to cats. They're actually extremely poisonous, so please be careful if you have cats. Don't mix cats and lilies. But I guess you can name your cats after lilies because Cantor exists, and he's... He's dead, but he's fine! <laughs> I really walk myself into some corners sometimes when I make these videos. Cantor is actually a tuxedo cat, which is one of my favorite types of cats. And I decided to change up his design ever so slightly to make it a little bit more white. I definitely wanted to have those adorable socks. And I added some little gray hairs here and there because he is an old man. And I decided to add in some fluffs coming out of his ear too to show the age really weighing on him. He has a couple of furs out of place because that's just kind of his personality. Eventually he did learn to accept Thistle for who they are. It just took him a pretty long time in the afterlife. <laughs> what am I saying about this show? Like everyone who's a slightly bad person dies and then becomes better afterwards. Um. <sighs> Not a very good message, pet peeves. You don't have to die to become a better person, I promise. I don't- I, I wrote this like literally 10 years ago, guys. It's- it's getting dated, alright? <laughs> Anyways, it was heavily implied in the Origins episode that Cantor becomes Maple. It's not that Cantor is Maple or becomes Maple, but rather that he is there in spirit. <laughs> Get it? That's a lot to say about a little tuxedo cat named after a lily, huh? But he turned out great! I love the design. Oh, I love this girly! Yaro! We love Yaro in this house! She's just so stinking cute. I loved her design from the get-go, but I knew I could make it a little better. I knew I could make it something unique. Because the type of cat that she is, oh my gosh, the exotic bangle is one of the f most fun cats. They have these amazing spots, almost like they're a jaguar or a cheetah. And I decided to add in more spots because she only has one little spot on her eye, which I kept. I still kept the one spot on the eye because that's an iconic Yarrow thing. But I decided to add a little bit more and more and more. And this design became needlessly complex very quickly, but oh my god, it's so cute. Yarrow's an amazing character because she's 
pretty much the exact opposite of Cantor, where she initially does have the, whoa, what is going on? Thistle, you're trans? That's crazy. But like, not in the bad way. It's just more or less that she's freaking out for herself because in that moment she had to realize, oh, wow, I really like you. Hmm. Maybe that changes something about me. And it's sort of like a, a awakening that she went through. And when she got through it, she still supported Thistle. They were just incompatible, unfortunately. Some people just change extremely drastically throughout the years and it just doesn't work out anymore. And I thought that was an important lesson to show in Origins that not everything works out perfectly. And it's okay because during those few years that Yero and Thistle were together, Yara was nothing but supportive and went on her own personal journey of growth. So they both came out of this growing even though it ended off on a bad note. I still think Yara is an amazing character. I faced a lot of stigma but came out strong, came out herself, independent, just a very strong character. Yara's brother, Comfrey, honestly? I am obsessed with his, his redesign. It turned out so good for no reason, and I'm kind of mad that he didn't get more screen time now. He was very much a foil to Thistle, in the sense that he wanted to protect his sister, he wanted to fight for his sister, he wanted to do everything he could for her, but Comfrey uses Yero's bipolar against her a lot, and likes to sort of manipulate her through that, which is bad. But don't worry, uh, I didn't kill him off. <laughs> he just redeems himself later in life, it's all good. Like you should! <laughs> but Thistle was definitely more supportive, helped Yero work through things, ask questions, was just sort of there for Yero, didn't hold it against her, didn't, you know, create more stigma, more bad feelings around it. Comfrey just used it as a tool of manipulation, and that's a bad, that's a bad, bad Comfrey. But he was just looking out for his sister in the only way that he knew. So Comfrey, your design slaps. I love it so much. You've got the edge. You've got the spots. You've got the patterns. It's amazing. Your colors are popping. But hey, do better next time. Don't spread mental health stigma. Bad, bad Comfrey. I get a lot of mixed feelings about Zinnia. I have people who love her. I have people who hate her. I have people who don't care. <laughs> I care about Zinnia. Zinnia is a very interesting character to me because she is just strong she is nothing but strong and i really wanted that to shine through in her redesign so obviously i made her look a lot more like the dutch shepherd that she's based off of i added a ton of speckles speckles and her coloration is just very dark she's got a very strong appearance which is exactly what we need for the leader of this gang i decided to keep her character pretty similar to her old design. I definitely wanted to emphasize her scar, <sighs> but Zinnia is just a really strong character, fought for what she believed in literally till the bitter end, and I'm so happy to say that she did become friends with Thistle in the very end. They still saw eye to eye, they moved past their past and looked towards a better future. And that's just so cool for her. She's grown so incredibly much and I'm so proud of her. Zinnia is super underrated and I will always love her. I don't care what y'all say, she is a girl boss. I know everyone's gonna be excited about this redesign. Maple, Maple, little Maple, our little birdie. I love her. Okay, so with the redesign, I decided to go a little bit willow on this and decided to make her a little more maple colored. I went with some red-ish tones to kind of make her have that red maple leaf coloration, but not exactly a maple leaf, just hinted slightly to still look like the brittle turn, which is the bird that she is based off of. I decided to add an adorable little bandana with maple leaf designs on it. I almost wanted to retcon, which is a term from TTRPGs, which is basically where you take back a, something you had previously said about a story and change the detail. I would like to retcon a little bit that instead of using cobwebs to help Maple's wing heal, it'd be super cute if we used a bandana. So she could always keep the bandana even though her wing has healed, and she could keep it on her to remind her that Thistle is her bestest buddy and that she can heal and grow. Because Maple did go through a lot prior to this. It'll never be shown in the show, unfortunately, but she is actually a healer and she finds this 
moment in her life where Thistle helps her to be very significant, as it was finally time for somebody to help heal her instead of her healing others. Just a little tidbit, fun little character fact for you. Maple, you're adorable. I love you. Next up, we have Ebony's episode, and we're going to start with Ebony's mother. I love Great Danes. They're amazing animals. They're huge, giant, loving dogs who think they are tiny little puppies, and it's adorable. But with her, I decided to make her a little bit more stout, just a little bit shorter. I just thought it would be fun to have a little bit of a height difference between all the characters, even though they are Great Danes. I obviously kept her design extremely similar to the previous because I love her little boots. I call them her little cowgirl boots because they look like little boots, her little patterns. I love it, and I kept it. And the only thing I changed was to make her ears fully darker instead of just the tips. And then of course she still has her little cow bandana. She's just another rugged mama, kind of like Ivy's, who is just like, go out there and explore the world or, or else. <laughs> and I love that about her. But Laurel is a beautiful, beautiful character and I just love how freeing her character is and her spirit is. Ebony's Aunt Begonia is another very rugged character who is just super sassy, doesn't take no for an answer, just type of character. Obviously stuck a little bit more to her previous design. I love the blues in her design. Decided to emphasize them a little bit more, give her that sun hat. Changed up the design of the little bandana a little bit more to be a, like a like almost like a picnic blanket because I don't know her little hat gives me picnic blanket vibes like she'd be sitting out on a picnic blanket drinking her lemonade she just reminds me of summer and I decided to keep the colors very summery added a little bit of detail to her eye to make it like slightly aged she's a little bit older she's the older sister of Laurel. So here is Begonia in her beauty. Not much has changed because she was just beautiful before and she's a tough one and we love that for her. Camellia, I kind of did a 180. <laughs> I kind of completely changed Camellia's design because the dog I based her off of looks absolutely nothing like the previous design and I don't know why. I don't know what possessed me to be like, yeah, let's just, let's just make her one plain color. She was based off of a yellow dog, but it's a bull terrier mix, so like a pit bull terrier who is more yellow cream colored with these cute little pinks and purples. And I was like, I don't know what happened. I, I, I don't know what I got possessed by. I don't know. Some, some eldritch horror, some demon, some reaper. I don't know. Now we've gone back on track. All right, now we've got Camille with her cream color. She has a little bit of patterns. She definitely has more purple accents to accent her eyes. You have to remember that Ebony and Camellia were extremely young parents, and to Camellia, this was a huge, huge commitment that she wasn't ready for. Honestly, as much as it sucks that Camellia left and sort of abandoned Daisy and Ebony, it was very necessary for her. I don't think she could have carried on much longer in the state that she was in. She was honestly taking care of herself and she was honestly bettering both Ebony and Daisy by taking care of herself. If she had stayed there, everyone would have been miserable. I think it's really important that people can step away from our lives for a while and come back a better person. So that's what I really love about Camellia is that she is genuinely working on it and that's great for her. You just can't see it from Ebony's perspective. Camellia, you're a strong girl. I'll give you that. But it still sucks that you're not there for your kiddo, man. Speaking of that kiddo, Daisy! Who's ready to see Daisy's redesign? Now that we have all these fun new colors and patterns to introduce with the redesigns, now we can really play with the daisies. So I had a lot of fun with this. I decided to go right in the middle. We're going Pitbull Terrier, Great Dane Mix, we're gonna go a little bit lighter on the coloration because of her mom's beautiful cream fur, but her dad's darker stone colored fur, and we're gonna add in those patterns. We're gonna take patterns from her grandmother, so Laurel's ears and little boots are shining through, but we also have Camellia's little ch like cream on her chest and on her face, and overall, this design is freaking adorable! Oh my god, I love her purple little nose and her purple eyes. Daisy is just the light of all of our lives. I think we could all agree that Daisy's the best little bean to have ever have happened. And as she grows up, I'm sure she's going to go through a lot in her mind about her parents and her upbringing. 
But I think in the end, Ebony brought her home to a stable place, her mom will eventually show up in her life, and I think Daisy is honestly going to be on a much better path because everyone took care of themselves in the way that they knew best. She's gone through a lot, but look at her! She's adorable! And she's killing it, and we love her! A fan favorite, Jasmine, our little Rottweiler. So the problem with this first design is that the colors were like way too dull. I, I don't know what it was about me. I was afraid to use bright colors, but nowadays we're going ham. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna really load up the colors on this character. We're gonna add some new patterns. I was debating for a while to keep her for short hair or long hair, but honestly with the short hair, it just wasn't looking like her. It just wasn't looking like Jasmine. So I decided to go with a longer hair Roddy, so she's probably a mixed breed now. I just can't get enough of her swirls! Her, her swirls are like iconic to her character, so we have a couple extra swirls, a lot more fluffiness to her. I thought about giving her an accessory, but honestly I don't want to take away from all of those curls, all those natural curls. So I decided to keep it simple, and this was the final result for Jasmine's redesign. Mistletoe! I love this character! She only showed up for like literally a couple minutes, but god, I love her! I just love the old cat aesthetic. She is super fluffy, she's a Persian, she's got that pushed in face, tiny tiny little ears. She is just an old, just an old, old character with so much life left in her and it's so obvious. She's got this spunk to her. She has had an incredible life and I think it's really important to show older characters that they can still do fun things and that they still have so much adventure left to be had. I don't like seeing old characters act like they're not capable because they are. They might take a little bit longer, they might go at their own pace, but that's really important. That's a great lesson to learn is to go at your own pace. Missile, I love you so much. You're so underrated. You're the best. 10 out of 10. Our last episode for this redesign session is going to be Rose's. We have Rose's redesign already. We're going to be redesigning Rose's family and I wanted them to be similar, like very similar. This is a purebred cat line. They're going to be very strikingly similar. But I thought it'd be super cool if they had little defining features of their own to make them unique. Aster, to me, has always come off as a more angular character, whereas Rose came off as a more bubbly character. I definitely gave Aster more of the triangular looks, definitely mimicking Rose's because they are literally twins, but gave him a little bit more of the darker features on his ears to match his father. And other than that, he does have those gold eyes like his mother. He has attributes of all of his family members. And then I decided to keep that lovely orange bandana, but give it a little bit of a design. So I added some plaid because plaid is super fun. And the original designs for all of Rose's family had plaid on the edges of their tails. So I decided to keep that little feature strong in the family. So now we've got at least one plaid bandana living on strong. And let's go Aster for being the world's most supportive sibling. I think he's one of the best siblings in all of the show, honestly, in my humble opinion. But that is what we've got for Aster. Aster's redesign. Oof, we got Rose's mom. I know everybody's gonna also light the comments on fire about how much we hate her, which is super fair. Um, because we are not huge fans of people who are, uh, you know, unaccepting and who are uh, extremely judgmental and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. She is one of those awful people who are genuinely afraid of people who aren't exactly like her. She fears what she does not understand, and she doesn't care to be educated and understand, so she's just constantly going to be afraid. Which is why she has such a strong opinion about wildcats. So don't be like Rose's mom. <laughs> Open your mind to being educated and learning the stories of other people before you judge them. Or just don't judge people at all. That's, that's my best advice. Anyways, for her design, I decided to add a little more cream to her, take away some of the darker features. I'm basing the redesigns off of their different plaid tail colorations. Hers was a lot lighter, so I added a lot lighter creams to her, like around her face and on her stomach and stuff like that. And then of course I gave her a collar because she is a purebred cat, she's a house cat. And I added a cute little diamond because I just thought that that made her look classy and rich. So <laughs> she has this little like diamond on her collar and she just gives me that Percy vibe now. I hope more people learned from her than were hurt by her. Rose's dad is honestly a great character. He did his darndest. 
he actually asked questions and listened when his kids were telling him things. And that's honestly the best thing you can do. If you're not educated on a topic that is extremely serious, as the ones that we were discussing in that episode, it is honestly best to listen and to understand and to strive to ask questions. Just do better. Just do better. It's that easy. And he definitely did that. So he's a great person. I wanted to show a lot more of that fluffiness, that roundness, gentle type of dad. He's definitely a lot softer than his wife. Is a lot more caring and I wanted that to show in his design. So he has a lot of fluff. He has a couple of features of his kids, obviously the ears from Aster and the roundness of Rose and the heart nose. But I also wanted to make his tail a lot darker to signify the brown tail that he had before. And he of course has a collar as well because he is a house cat. But no, I love Rose's dad. I think he's a great guy. He's a great dad. And he did a lot better handling the same situation that Rose's mom did. It just goes to show you what you should do versus what you shouldn't do. Oh boy, we got Tulip! I was shook to the core that I found a reference image that looks identical to what I was looking for with Tulip. I had this very specific cat in my mind because when I think of a wild cat, I just think of the wild cats that were around my neighborhood and some of the feral community cats that were in my neighborhood growing up. And there was always these amazingly colored tortoiseshell cats. And I found exactly what I was looking for because I wanted to implement some purples into Tulip's design because tulips are purple, but also because I just think that the original actual real life cat has hints of purplish periwinkle blue. And I thought that'd be really cool to add into her design. So I played with that for a really long time. And then I decided, okay, well, that's not exactly working the way I wanted it to. So I kept a lot of the patterns and then I went ahead and did purples with the ears and mouth to have it there, but a little more subtle because it was, it was honestly swallowing her design before. I did give her three little tufts on all the different spots. She has three tufts on each side of her face, on top of her head and on her tail because it looks like a tulip, like a tulip that is blooming. And of course she has her spikes on the top of her ears that just signify that she is a wild cat. And I mostly kept her design patterns pretty similar, but I wanted to change it up just ever so slightly and add in a third color because everything works better in threes with this character. And I really wanted to stick to that. And that is our baby, baby tulip. Look at how cute she is. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with this design. It's my favorite so far. I know everyone is probably extremely eager to see this redesign, Violet. We gotta see what Rose and Violet look like next to each other now, right? So I definitely drew more from the reference, a pixie bob, which is a half domestic cat, half wild cat. And I definitely wanted to make sure she showed her wild side in this redesign. She is proud! <laughs> I love Violet's design so much from the beginning. I loved having her kind of like her split, like I called them pants. <laughs> I loved having the pants, the different colors, and then I loved the freckles and the spiky ears. So I kept all of it. I kept all of it. I just made her hair a lot different. I made it almost like cover her face. I imagine if she was a human, she would have her head half shaved sort of thing. And she has her lovely fluffy tail that almost mimics a violet blooming. And of course the freckles, the spots, the freckles. I decided to keep all the spots and stripes pattern all along her back and on her face. The bandana is adorable. Of course we had to put violets on it to really contrast Rose's little Rose bandana. I love her relationship with her parents as a foil to Rose. I think that's so important. Just want to show how different backgrounds can really influence people and why you shouldn't be so quick to judge them. Oh, Violets, you're so amazing. I love you. I just want to hug you. Eee, you're so adorable. I love Pat 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 Pat. All right, and now we have the Bobcat himself, Geranium, which is Violet's dad. Violet's dad is honestly such a fun character. I loved having the little scenes that he was in. All of the memories she has with her dad are just so positive and almost whimsical in a way. 
She just really admires her dad and is just so proud of him and their shared roots. So for his design, I went all out. I went all out with the spikes. I was like, we're going wild cat, we're going wild hair, we're going wild. So I went insane and added a million spikes and added sort of like that broad face. He's got a slightly more boxy appearance. And then of course he's got the stripes, he's got lots of different colors now, and he shares the same lovely blue eyes as Violet. But no, I love how like sturdy and strong his character appears to be, even though he's literally the goofiest, softest boy on the inside. I know I like symbolizing things a lot, but with him, it just, he seems so scary, but he's honestly the most gentle spirit, and I love that. I love doing that with characters. Gentle giant characters are literally some of my favorites. So Jerry, you're a great gentle giant and a great dad. You're super cool. We love you. Our last redesign for today is going to be Violet's mother. Honestly, this is another one of those cases where I don't understand what happened between the reference image and what came out of it. But, uh, we're gonna fix it now. She was supposed to be like an orange cat. She was supposed to be a yellow and orange cat with long hair. I don't know what happened. I don't know where the stripes came from. There's literally no stripes. I don't know where- <laughs> Her name is Dandelion, so we needed to emphasize all those yellows and oranges and tie them all together. So Dandelion went through quite a pass before she eventually settled down to have Violet. She was actually a wild cat previously, so she actually has some scars and things, which I'll be adding later. She's so unconditionally loving and supportive. She is the polar, polar opposite of Rose's mom. That was my main goal was to say, hey, here's two domesticated cats. One's purebred, one was born in the wild. And here's how different they raised their daughters. And I just think it's really important that background really does influence people and their beliefs. How it's super important to work past it, to be who you want to be, not who everyone else told you to be. Rose's mom obviously had parents that pointed her in a very strong direction and she stuck to it because that's all she's known. Whereas Dandelion's parents might have been a little different. She might have been a little bit more free, a lot more open-minded, and definitely took her own path and decided, hey, I'm going to support my daughter with anything she does. Violet was an artist, she supported that. Violet has a girlfriend, she supports that. I don't know, character foils are freaking amazing! I love having my characters be complete opposites but similar and <laughs> Insert complicated comparison circles here. Needless to say, I added the oranges and the cream spots and everything to her design, a yellow collar to signify that she is domesticated now, and of course the yellow eyes to tie her back to her dandelion roots. Haha, <laughs> plant buns. I'm on fire today. And that is our final design for Violet's mother. All right, now that we've rounded up all of these designs, let's do some quick comparisons. Ivy's mom changed a little bit in the sense that I, she looks more like a blueberry now, but that's perfect because she's supposed to look like a hyacinth. So now she has a lot more blue tone, she looks a little bit older, and she's got a little bit more fluff to her. Thorn, literally nothing changed except for a slight coloration difference, and now he's got that cute little cowlick that signifies that that's his thorn. Reed got some new patterns, some new colorations to better match the real life version of the cat that he is based off of, but also to add more shadows and darkness to his character as he is a very troubled and complicated boy. Reed's mom looks like a mama bear now, has some lovely new colorations to really match the reference cat, the Burmese cat, and of course she has those lovely golden eyes to shine through like the morning glory she is. A little bit changed about Reed's dad's design, just added a lot more shadows, just like Reed, a lot more spikes, a little bit more angular, but still kept those piercing green eyes, which Reed actually takes on when he becomes a reaper. Azalea just looks a lot more like a real life Shiba Inu, just a couple more accents of colors and pinks, and just really adorable little eyelashes. I love her so much. She's just so stinking adorable. Burdock changed a lot. Colors mostly stayed the same, but patterns changed a lot. We got a lot more complicated with the fluffiness and the leaves and the accents and the accessories, but I think that really fits his character since he's quite eccentric. Lantern Bearer 
Looks fantastic. Definitely looks a lot more like a wolf. Definitely has a lot more defining features. Love the stars. Love the glowy aspects. Love the gentle yellows to accent the glowiness of the stars. Very thoughtful design. Definitely looking a lot better than the previous one, which is just a plain gray wolf-ish character. Fern did not change one bit, just got a little bit stubbier and a little bit cuter because my art style's changed and that's honestly a good thing. We love you, Fern. Canter didn't change too terribly much, gained some socks, got a little bit more gray hairs, definitely showing his age a little bit more and his redesign. A couple furs out of place, but you know what? I think that fits his character just fine. And he still has those pumpkin eyes. Euro changed drastically <laughs> with a lot more spots, a lot more patterns, colorations. There's aspects of the new one that stayed exactly the same, but there's aspects that have obviously drastically changed, but you could still tell it's the same character. And I love that about her. She looks a lot more like an actual bangle. Same thing with her brother. Her brother's design, honestly, I feel turned out a little bit better than Euro's, which is a little mean to say, but I just thought his design was really, really fun with the different, like the sideburns and the, the hair on the top. I don't know. There's something just about his original design that stuck out to me more with the one foot color different in the original. But now we've got a little bit of a better more accurate design to a bangle, and I honestly can't get enough of this redesign. Zinnia changed a lot, to say the least. She's got a lot more of the speckles, she looks a lot more broad, she has a lot more spikes and angles. She definitely looks a lot more tough, and her scar is very much emphasized now, just for the sake of it being dramatic. Maple it has a lot more maple colors to her. She's got a lovely red accent. She's got her cute little eyelashes now, and she's got a little bandana to show that she can heal and that others can heal her. Not much changed about Ebony's family as far as Ebony's aunt and mother goes. Ebony's mom stayed pretty much exactly the same, just slightly, slightly different changes. But that's just because I think her original design was just really peak already. Same thing with Begonia. The designs were just some of my absolute favorites. And I didn't really want to change too ter terribly much about them because you really can't beat the original. Camellia, however, finally looks like her reference image. She definitely looks more like a pit bull terrier, which is exactly what we were going for here. We love to emphasize her purples because I think that's just a really amazing trait of hers is those purple eyes, which she shares with her daughter Daisy. And Daisy, of course, looks adorable. Now she has little spots and now she has all different features from all parts of her family and carries all of that in her heart. It's so much better than the previous design. Everything was just a little too plain, but now she has a little bit of life to her. Jasmine got a little bit realistic, got a little bit more colors, patterns, definitely kept those swirls, emphasized the swirls a little bit, honestly. And we definitely referenced the real life version a little bit better. Mistletoe obviously also mimics the real life version of a Persian cat a little bit more, but obviously got a little bit more cartoony as well with how fluffy she is and how spiked up she is. She's got fur out of place everywhere. She's got gray hairs everywhere. I love her redesign so much. On to Rose's family. They all obviously share very similar traits, but just enough that they're very different. So Aster has a lot more triangles, a lot more spikes, still kept that lovely orange scarf. Rose's mom, there's almost a slyness to her. I don't know how to describe it, but I think the way that her angles all go in one direction, it makes sense of her one-track mind thinking she's got going on, but she's also got that edge to her because she is kind of a pouty character. And then Rose's dad, of course, kept up on those lovely darker colors with the brown tail and the brown collar, but still resembles that he has the heart. He is the heart of this relationship. He has the fluffiness. I love how his design really speaks to how much he relates to his kids because he is the more kind parent and I think that this redesign really actually shows that in the design. Little Tulip has become my little PBJ of joy. Emphasis on the J with the joy. Oh my gosh, I knew from the get-go that I wanted to add purple into her design somewhere and I got away with it and I'm so proud. <laughs> 
I love her so much. I've always loved her character. She's always been super fun and wholesome, and now we've got a design that really shows off how spunky she is and how unique she is. Oh, Violet just really pops! I love Violet! She has these amazing, amazing stripes and spots. All these new fun patterns that really mimic the old one. She kind of has the old pants pattern. In the, in the back, you can see how she has the darker coloration versus the light. But it also carries over nicely to look a lot more like a pixie bob. I think the little pinkish red accents really tied that together to contrast the blues. It just- this is just really good. Same thing with Violet's dad. We have an amazing redesign here. He looks so much more like a bobcat. He's got the spikes. He's got the wild patterns. He's got the stripes, the spots, the fluff, the spikes. He's got it all and he is working it. I love this for him. Jerry's literally slaying. And then lastly, Dandelion, Violet's mom, is just finally looks like her reference design as well. She's got the orange and the yellows. She's got her scars, which literally never even showed in the show, and I'm super mad about that because I just chose all the wrong angles to not show her scars. But we can see it now, and there's a lot more detail we can see now, and I love that for her and her lovely more calm, gentle design. And that concludes part one of the Origins redesigns for the sidekicks. We'll be picking up part two next time in the next episode of the Origins redesigns series. We'll be covering all of the remaining side characters for the remaining episodes of Origins that have not yet been released. So we have Cypress, Fennel, Lupin, Poppy, Mallow, Willow, and Rue to cover in the very next episode. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Let me know what was your favorite here, what you would change, if you have any suggestions. I've already gotten some fantastic comments that I'm going to be implementing into the redesigns of the redesigns, which sounds silly, but we're definitely gonna be changing up a lot of just random things that are actually going to appear in the show because that's the fun part of the reboot. We get to do everything together. We can change whatever we'd like. If you wanna comment and say, make ivy green i could like that's just the power we have and i'd love to hear it and i'm super open to suggestions as always thank you all so much again and i can't wait to see you in the very next video